Good afternoon, Jets Nation. Welcome to the Juju Jet Show. And today we're going to be going ahead and talking about the good and the bad from last night's win against the Atlanta Falcons. So without any hesitation, let's get it started. So let's start off with the bad. Half number one was just one for the New York Jets to forget. Entering halftime, we were losing 16-3. to And, you know, there is a reason for that. Last night, the New York Jets played like three starters. Those guys being Sauce Gardner, Garrett Wilson, and Brees Hall. If you think he's a starter, so like three starting guys, give or take, played for the New York Jets last night. The Falcons had most of their starting guys out there. So of course they were going to do good. Of course they were going to score points. That was almost a given. They were going to score points and beat up the Jets backups. That's a given. We should have expected it coming out. And I honestly was kind of impressed with how our backups played. I mean, they held the Falcon starters to a three and out and only one touchdown, you know, so see that as a positive thing if you want. But I mean, yeah, half number one was definitely a sloppy one from the New York Jets. We had a really tough time stopping the pass. I mean, it felt like every single Falcon completion was like 10 plus yards, 20 plus yards, and they didn't really have many incomplete passes in half number one either. And Bryce Hall had a really bad game. He's been having a really solid training camp the Eagles game he looked pretty good and last season he looked pretty solid too this Falcons game he looked like a guy who's going to not be on an NFL team in like a month Bryce Hall did not look like the same player he was last season I don't know what happened to Bryce Hall before the game but I don't want to know because it just was a terrible performance from him. Mike White also did not look that good either. I mean, the difference between White and Chris Strievler was just night and day. White was overthrowing, underthrowing, and throwing it to guys late. He did not look like he had any juice out there. I mean, Mike White definitely lost his quarterback three spot to Chris Strievler. I don't think he makes the roster at all anymore. So, I mean, yeah, Mike White did not help his roster making chances at all tonight. And the New York Jets also had 11 penalties last night, too. I mean, we didn't play any of our starters. So, of course, you're going to expect backups to be sloppy. But 11 penalties, it's kind of a lot. But that's why they're backups. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the good. Chris Strievler, Chris the Goat. As I said earlier, the difference between him and Mike White was night and day. He just had a fantastic performance last night. And the thing I love about Chris Strievler is this guy wants a home. He's been on nine different NFL teams in a year. He wants to be on a team permanently. And I don't think he makes a 53, but his spot on the practice squad, that practice squad quarterback, probably is going to be Chris Strievler now, not Mike White. I think he lost that. Chris Strievler is going to be that guy. He's showing that he wants to do anything he can to win. He tries really hard out there, and that's what you want to see from your players fighting to make roster spots. So just a really good performance from Chris Strievler. Let another comeback win. And one of the highlights of last night was definitely his long touchdown pass to Lawrence Cager, whose position switch from wide receiver to tight end is just working out awesome for him. I mean, his game last week against the Eagles was good, and this week's game was also good. Just amazing performances from Lawrence Cager in back-to-back weeks, and I do think he makes the roster. We also saw a pretty good performance from Denzel Mims. I mean, as soon as he entered the game, he made an impact. He wasn't on the field for very long, but every single time he was on the field, the dude was starting to make impacts. He was making catches, he was making plays, and who knows if he's going to make the roster, who knows if we're going to trade him, but he, you know, made plays every single time he's been in games and so far this preseason. At least he wasn't committing penalties this week, too. I mean, he looked good. We also saw some pretty good performances from Sauce Gardner and Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson just was so good when he was in last night. Going up against the Falcons starting cornerbacks, A.J. Terrell and Casey Hayward, he had this highlight reel catch where he jumped up caught it in coverage it was a contested catch landed his feet and bounced this dude's just an acrobat and he's gonna make catches i mean he's just really good and sauce gardner didn't get the ball thrown his way last night and hasn't gotten the ball thrown his way this entire preseason and there is a reason for that and bradley and nay also looked really good last night i mean it didn't matter what quarterback it was marcus mariota felipe franks desmond ritter Bradley Ine was getting to them. He was applying pressure all night, and he ended up getting a scoop and score touchdown, which was the last score of the game, and put the New York Jets ahead? No, or no, it lengthened our lead. But either way, the New York Jets led it. Had a comeback win last night. Was a pretty solid performance from our team. 
Next week is the final preseason game against the New York Giants. Are you guys going to be going to the game? Comment it down below. And I am your host, Jude Jet, signing off for now. See you guys later. Peace.